Hello YouTube, Senior Musica here. Back to do another compare and contrast video. I know, it's been four years since the last one, but I gotta go with the muse when it strikes. The last video did very well and received hundreds of comments, the latest ones being just this week. There was so much lively discussion on the video that I've wanted to make a follow-up for a while now. This time, I'll be doing my personal favorite game, Ark Survival Evolved, in which I have over 3,000 hours just on Steam. I also have it on the Epic platform, with a couple hundred hours there as well, and I'll be matching Ark against its younger sibling, Atlas. I also have tons of random footage for both games lying around. I can't show you everything possible about the two games because nobody has that kind of time, but I'll hit the highlights as best I can. Now, unlike last time, I have a lot of experience in ARC, including in-game content. In ARC, I have ascended off four maps at alpha level, I have beaten the bosses on every map except Valguero and Scorched Earth, I have played on both PvP and PvE servers, both official and unofficial, in tribes or solo. I've played vanilla ARC, I've played ARC with mods, I write custom INI files, I have physically hosted my own servers as well as remotely hosted clusters. In Atlas, I don't have as much experience, beyond max leveling a character, building a galleon, taking on the undead ships, and digging up buried treasure. I haven't done any of the quests, gone on whale hunts, or fought the PvP battles, but with about 130 hours, I've seen most of this somewhere before. Now before anyone gets their shorts twisted, it's my opinion that Atlas is the spiritual successor to Ark, but with improved loading times and performance tweaks. It was made by the same studio group and even still had ARC menus embedded when it launched. Also, why not a pirate ARC? May as well get your swag on while you tame and conquer. Atlas still has dinosaurs as well, like the Leatherwing and Razortooth, as well as undead armadas sailing around ready to sink you while you're still a noob, and pirate bases and ships you have to contend with in order to rule an island. A quick story is that I had purchased Atlas on launch week in late 2018, and I, like a lot of other gamers, found it nigh unplayable due to the extreme lag on the official servers. So I refunded it and continued to just play ARC for the next couple of years. Then, in mid-2021, a friend of mine purchased Atlas for me, and this time I've enjoyed the hell out of playing it. What do I love about these games, and why bother to make another video like this? Well, it's a matter of infinite replayability for someone like me who enjoys the survival sandbox genre. You will eventually run out of things to do in both games if you're a checklist sort of person, but I've found the joy is in the early game struggle to get established and stable. After that, it's a matter of what we refer to as base bitching, basically resource farming and upkeep like keeping the feeding troughs full of food and filing all the things away in their own places. Also, I want to share some tribal knowledge with the community. Some of you may have never played either game, and I hope this video can help you decide which one's right for you. Now, admittedly, Atlas is a bit more focused on sailing early game due to the large amount of open water terrain on the maps. If you want to get off the starter islands, you have to buy a rowboat, raft, or sloop to go to other map grids and find metal, so you can make things like metal tools and firearms. I will warn you against trying to get anywhere in a rowboat, as you're honestly better off swimming for as long as it takes. However, the sharks may eat you. You can survive quite well on the starter islands at a basic level in Atlas. That is, if other PvP players don't mind. However, most people will get really bored of doing the same six or seven chores and never progressing. So where do you start in these kind of games? Well, step one is gather resources. Step two, make things. Step three, decide if you want to build a base. After that, it's really just whatever you feel like, hence sandbox. Atlas gives you ye old piratey times mixed with ARC's harvest, crafting, and combat mechanics. Currently, player levels are restricted to player level 51 in vanilla gameplay, where ARC currently lets you get to 105 max base level. Tame levels are also different, with Atlas only allowing 30 tame attribute points for vanilla gameplay and ARC offering either 73 or 88 levels for single player. Both games use base wild levels plus attribute points to equal total level. You can tweak your INI files in Atlas the same way you can in ARC. Hell, the code is nearly identical in most instances. I've managed to get 350 player levels into Atlas with the same code copy-pasted from my ARC INI files. Currently, there's no choice of spawn locations in Atlas. On the ocean map, you spawn in grid B8, the starter islands. 
Like Ark, the map is blank until you explore it. I gotta say, the Atlas map seemed way huge even compared to the Ragnarok map in Ark. In doing research for this video, I came across an article stating that the ocean map is roughly 45,000 square kilometers with 700 unique land masses. Travel times completely across the world are upwards of 24 hours in even the fastest ships. Yeah, that's a pretty dang big map. So what's there to do in these games? Basically, whatever you want. Again, sandbox. Your own private play place. So you can explore, build, craft things, meet other players, play music, or stand around doing absolutely f all while you watch a live stream and eat chips. Atlas does put more emphasis on exploration with the treasure map mechanics, which force you to go places to obtain the gold coins you need to purchase larger ships. Ark doesn't have any random buried loot out in the world, but does have loot drops, hidden loot drops in caves and underwater, as well as loot crates on some maps like Ragnarok. Modded Atlas loads way faster than modded Ark does in my experience, even with Atlas on a spinning platter hard drive to the tune of two-thirds faster. A roughly 30 minute load time into a heavily modded ARC non-dedicated session running on a hard drive hosted by my friend Anginator, the Atlas time was about 12 minutes into a heavily modded session on the same hard drive for Atlas. Now before anyone asks, yes it was the same PC, you know the specs didn't change in between. Let's talk similarities. Taming is nearly identical in both games. I've only seen all passive or all captive taming mechanics from ARC in Atlas. I haven't yet seen or done an aggressive tame, which is to tranquilize them out and then feed them in Atlas, but I have done the favorite food item in the last hotbar slot to tame, and knock down health and then bowl of them and feed to tame. Also perhaps there are aggressive tames in Atlas, but I focus more on exploring and building so far. There are lootable shipwrecks in both games. Arc shipwrecks are due to community supported maps, and it's basically a treasure box after you kill a few underwater things off. Atlas, the shipwreck mechanics are built-in random loot chances, with each wreck having a loot rating from 1 to 10. You have to dive down deep to get to the wrecks in Atlas, and they are not visible from the surface, save for the debris on the surface. Now don't confuse flotsam with an actual shipwreck though. If you see a broken mast and some seaweed on the surface, that's a wreck. If it's only a floating box, that's flotsam, so don't try diving down when it's just a box. Both games use cannon. Old school smoothbore iron cannons are used for taming rock elementals or sieging enemy player fortresses in Ark. Ships cannons in Atlas are a must if you want to be able to survive encounters with the random NPC enemies, the fleets of the damned, or the pirate ships. If you have enough crew to man all of your cannons, they will track and fire automatically, or you can control them yourself while captaining your ship. Both games have the same type of clothing and armor. There's Atlas fiber, an arc cloth, atlas leather, and arc hide, atlas plate, and arc flak. Both games have fur armor for cold environments, and these are the basic armor types. Arc does also include riot armor, which is made from the fabricator, but it's much more resource intensive and only offers about another 15 points of armor per piece, so I usually just stop at flak in arc. Both games let you dress to impress if you wish. Both games offer costumes and skins and haircuts, oh my. In both games, you use scissors or shears to cut your and other players' hair, and hair is also a resource in both games. Both games have a variety of mods to suit your playstyle. Ark has an incredible community of modders who have written thousands of mods for the game, much like many other titles I won't mention. Atlas's community is largely probably just Ark's community, and there are some identical mods for both games, with the same names and functions. Now here's a fun mechanic for you. Both games have glider suits you can wear. Ark's Aberration Glider is the skin you wear over your chest armor, while Atlas's glider suit needs to be hot barred to function and weighs a lot so you move pretty slow when it's equipped. As you probably noticed at the first of the video, both games have epic theme music. For being less than three minutes each, both themes are very high energy and epic feeling. With the notable exception of this crap right here. Why is this drivel an arc? I freaking hate the summer bash event so much. It's like 1980s porn music for f <clears throat> sake. So why do I like these games so much? Arc, I am used to how it works. I can play it for any amount of time and have fun running around, exploring, crafting, building, or running away from things. 
Atlas is much the same, except for the go sailing and build ship mechanics. The crafting menus, building mechanics are super similar. You can build some things in your inventory, if you have the resources, but mid and higher tier items will take crafting stations, unless you have a blueprint in some cases. You can whistle your tames in both games. Same default keys on PC also. Follow is T, for example, in both games. Now in Atlas, ships count as tames, and you can whistle the ships to follow you. Both games use K for cinematic. This will take you out of your heads-up display and inventory and put you into a full cinematic mode with nothing but the scenery on the screen. This does lock your player orientation, so don't try running off the edge of a cliff looking for some awesome screenshots unless you've got a glider, skin, or suit. Both games have a six-tier loot system, with basic items having a pale gray background and the highest tier having a light blue. In Ark, the tiers from bottom to top are Primitive, Ramshackle, Apprentice, Journeyman, Mastercraft, and Ascendant. In Atlas, you have Common, Fine, Journeyman, Masterwork, Legendary, and Mythical. In both games, as you go up the tiers, the items cost more to craft and repair. Both of these titles can look spectacular on highest graphical settings. I'll admit, I don't have the computing power currently to max out Arc or Atlas but I can run on custom mid to high settings with the view distance on Epic, because you never know what's coming just outside render range. If you keep every other setting on low, put your view distance on Epic, always Epic, because most especially in Atlas, you cannot maneuver a ship super fast until late game, and you need to turn away from the enemy armadas. In Ark, nothing is worse than running straight down a rock valley with sheer cliffs on either side, and suddenly, in spawns a Gigantosaurus 100 feet in front of you. That's some scary shit. They will eat you. So what's really different? The most notable differences so far are that Atlas includes NPCs by default in the form of pirates and enemy fleets. There are NPC mods for Ark, but it's not currently a base game mechanic. Ark doesn't have anything like the sailing mechanics that Atlas does. Ark has a basic raft or a motorboat, both of which are square platforms and control like drunken hippos. Atlas boasts dinghies, rafts, sloops, schooners, brigantines, galleons, and build your own ship mechanics, just to name a few. You have to keep your ship on course, avoid the fleets of the damned, keep the sails into the wind, otherwise you move slower than walking pace. Most all the items in Atlas, though identical in function, have different names and symbols. Instead of simple and fabricated weapons in arc, you have 17th century flintlocks, which are the pistols, blunderbusses, which are shotguns, carbines, which are the long neck rifle. You still have bows and crossbows in both games. In both games, you need drinking water to survive. The difference here is that in art, you must locate a water source. All water is fresh water, somehow, and either just drink it or apply pipes to bring the water where you need it. There was a happy time when the S Plus mod would let you connect an intake pipe anywhere in the ground and get water, but that's been fixed, sadly. In Atlas, you can dig for water in grassy areas on the islands. You can do this with either your hands or with a shovel, which yields much better results. You cannot dig the terrain in Ark. As stunning as the scenery is, you cannot dig, and you certainly cannot alter the terrain or terraform in either game. The NPC fleet battles are a hell of fun, and I imagine PvP engagements are amazing if you have full crews on both sides. I will say trying to repair a ship solo in mid-combat is hectic to say the least. Keeping the wind in your sails and the enemy off to your starboard or port side for full broadside attacks are a constant jostle for position as the ships circle each other like so many lions about to bite one another. Atlas basically has safe zones, like a lot of other games where players cannot engage in PvP and nothing super dangerous spawns. Freeport Islands such as the starting grids are where you will find safe harbor in Atlas. There are more sets of islands with free ports on them. In fact, I think there's about 30 on the ocean map, roughly. I say I think because the online maps I have looked up do not always match the in-game map. Oddly, Atlas has a mini game, a skill check mechanic, when you need to reload your firearms. I was rather surprised to see this the first time, and I still miss it when I'm not paying close attention. If you successfully complete all three skill checks, you reload about 20% faster and do more damage with your next shot. In ARC, you just hit R to reload on PC and wait a few seconds. 
Something I do appreciate in both games is that the reloads do look the part. The animations in Atlas are fantastically accurate for a game. Atlas has a fully broke out skill tree system, where Ark only has the Ingram system you can dump points into to learn to build stuff as you level up. In Atlas, you have to pay points into the skill systems, and there are several of them, so be sure to read carefully before investing points to unlock what you need, as the knowledge for building and crafting is broken up across the trees. One thing I noticed in Atlas was that player max level health is locked to 316 points, even with INI file tweaks including boosted stat affinities, and you cannot level up movement speed for some reason. I'm sure someone has a mod which changes this, but I haven't found it yet. In ARC, you can take and set a survivor to be so fast that they're uncontrollable with boosted stats. And this may be what the dev team in Atlas was trying to prevent here was an unfair advantage on PvP servers if your Pathfinder can move faster than the musket balls they are dodging. But it still would have been nice to dump at least a few points to make your player move somewhat faster. An interesting aspect of ARC is that you can go from absolutely Stone Age basics where you're picking up berries and poop to eat, smacking dodo birds with clubs, all the way up through and including automatic weapon combat in an advanced computer simulation arena complete with lasers and holograms while wearing jetpack tech armor. In Atlas, you are stuck about the mid to late 18th century for technology that I've seen so far. Atlas, like Ark, does have generated weather. The biggest difference here is that in Atlas, the weather will kill you and destroy your ships. The massive oceanic cyclones can tear a fleet apart pretty fast if your ships are built with basic pieces. You can try to dodge, but it's faster to go through a few of them, get out of the area quicker rather than zigzagging around trying to avoid them all. Atlas uses multiple types of the same resource. For example, in Ark, if you need hide, metal ingots, and wood, you use hide, metal ingots, and wood. In Atlas, you may need several types of the same resource to make an item. You can find different types of the same class of resource located around the map. Some islands will have basalt, iron, limestone, and softwood, while other islands will have agate, tin, slate, and wet wood. Higher tier crafting recipes will require more than one type of the same resource, and when you get up into mythical class items in Atlas, you're going to need four to five types of the same resource to craft it. Tying on to the discussion about resources are the farms and warehouses in Atlas. Now this is a major difference. These are automatic gathering buildings. Here you could set up farms like quarries or mines and have the warehouses collect the resources within a 450 meter range while you're out doing other things. This is a good in-game automation mechanic and gives you some choices when it comes to AFK harvesting. The warehouses and farms run on oil, which they do not collect, so you will have to check back in to keep them running. So is Atlas a clone of Ark? Not exactly. It's a reimagined version of the survival sandbox based around Ark mechanics and with similar elements built in. I would like to emphasize that Atlas is still in early access, meaning that many things can and will likely continue to drastically change. This video is up to date as of the moment I'm posting it, but who knows what's coming over the horizon next. I'm sure that over the coming months and years, both games will continue to update. There will be more community content and more maps to explore. Thank you all very much for watching. Fair winds and clear sunrises to you all out there in the virtual world. Senior Musica, out.